Hey, this is Seish Venigopal. Welcome to another lesson in data structures and algorithms. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to derive the running time of binary search using what's called the comparison tree. First, a quick run through of binary search to get situated. Here's an example with a sorted array of integers of length 10 with the code that is executed on it. Say we're searching for the integer 19. Low stops at 0, high at 9, and the midpoint is 4. 0 plus 9 divided by 2, which is 4.5, but truncated down to 4 because of the integer division. So the first comparison is at index 4, which holds the value 26. 19 is not equal to 26, which then results in another comparison that checks if 19 is less than 26. It is, and this results in high being set to mid minus 1, highlighted in the code. So the next iteration continues searching for 19 in the left half of the array. The next comparison is 19 against 12, which further narrows the array extent. 19 is then compared against 17, and then against 19, where a match is found. What we want to count toward running time is the number of times 19 is compared against a value in the array. And that count is 7, because in every iteration except the last, when a match is found, two comparisons are made, one for equality and another for less than. Now what if we wanted to determine the number of comparisons to find 62, which is at index 7, or 83, which is the last entry, or even to search for something that is not in the array, such as 55. We could plow through the process like we did for 19, but it gets tedious. Moreover, what we're really after is the general case. How fast is binary search on an array of length n? In particular, we want to find out the worst case number of comparisons to find something, or fail without match. To get answers to all these questions, we'll use the comparison tree, which is a much better approach for analysis. Here's the comparison tree for the array. The nodes hold the indices of the array positions, not the values in the array. What the comparison tree shows is all possible searches in the array. So, no matter what is being searched for, the first comparison will always be made against a value at index 4 of the array, since this is the midpoint. This is at the top of the tree. If the search continues, it may either go to the left half or to the right half of the array, after an additional comparison. If left, the next comparison is against the value at index 1, if right, against the value at index 7, and so on. Each node is marked with the equality comparison that will be made at that index, and each left branch is marked with the less than for the comparison needed to go left. Each right branch is marked with the greater than. A greater than comparison is not actually made in the code, but if you do end up taking a right branch, it was because the result of the less than comparison was false, which is effectively the same as making a greater than comparison. Here's a trace of the search for 19 on the comparison tree. The search path is shown starting at 4, value 26 in the array, then branching left to index 1, value 12 in the array, then right to index 2, value 17, and finally ending up at index 3, which of course has the matching value 19. You can find out how many comparisons this took by simply counting the equals less than and greater than markers encountered along the search path, which gives you a grand total of seven as before. And here's a trace of the search for 38 and the comparisons that amount to 5. The worst case number of comparisons for any search that finds a match is 7. This would be for the values at indices 3, 6, and 9, whose nodes in the tree are farthest from the top or root. The array values corresponding to these indices are 19, 45, and 83, so if you search for any one of these, you will end up making 7 comparisons to find it. Now, 
A search doesn't always result in a match. Think of a user logging into a website. They could mistype their username or password, which would result in a failure to match. So we need to account for failed searches as well and know how many comparisons will be used up by the possible failure cases. In the comparison tree, failures are shown by square boxes with an F in them. These are called failure nodes. Notice that there are 11 failure nodes, one for each place in the array where the failure could occur. Take the leftmost F box, for instance. This box represents all fail searches that fall to the left of the first entry in the array which would be any value less than 11. Here's another example. This failure box represents all values that fail between indexes 4 and 5, which are 27 through 37. So the 11 failure boxes include two for the extremes of less than the first value and greater than the last value, plus nine for the in-between spots between every pair of entries. So what is the worst case number of comparisons to fail? Looking at the comparison tree, the worst case would happen at the bottom most failure nodes. But before we can count the comparisons, we need to add in the extra comparison needed to get to all the failure nodes along the branches that lead to them. So let's do that. To see why we added these, let's look again at the previous example of searching for 19. We counted seven comparisons to find 19. But what if you were looking for 20? We wouldn't find it, resulting in failure between the values of 19 and 26. The process would follow the exact same path as before, all the way to 19 in the array. At that point, low and high will both be equal to 3 but 20 is not equal to 19, so an extra comparison would be made to check if 20 is less than 19. It's not, so low would be incremented by one, would become one more than high. The while loop would terminate, and the method would return false. So the search for 20 would fail after using up eight comparisons, one more than that for 19. Observe that every failure node is reached after one comparison after the preceding success node. You may have also figured out that the count of comparisons for any success node is always an odd number, which means the count of comparisons for every failure node is always an even number. So back to our original question. What is the worst case number of comparisons for any failure in this example? One way to answer this is to count the number of comparisons for any of the bottom most failure nodes. So starting from any of these failure nodes and tracing the path to the root, we will count eight comparisons. Another way to find the worst case number of comparisons for failure is to add one to the worst case number of comparisons for success, since we know that a failure reach is reached one comparison after the preceding success node. The worst case success nodes in this example are the ones that are farthest from the root at indices 3, 6, and 9. Each of these needs seven comparisons. So for each of the bottom most failure nodes, which are all one branch below these, we need eight comparisons. Now, the worst case number of comparisons for success and failure, and indeed the comparison tree itself, has nothing to do with the actual set of values in the array. Remember that the comparison tree shows all possible successes and failures, not just any one particular value. The shape of the tree, which in turn determines the number of comparisons for all successes and failures, depends only on the length of the array. So we draw a comparison tree only knowing the length of the array and we don't have to know what actual values are in the array. Here's a comparison tree for an array of length 5. And here's one for an array of length 7. 
To summarize, the comparison tree can be used to analyze the running time of final research. In this lesson, we saw how to determine the worst case number of comparisons for successful searches, as well as failed searches for an array of length 10. In the next part, we'll see how to count the average number of comparisons for success and failure on arrays of specific lengths, then generalize to arrays of any length. See you then.